Hi again, it's me, Nick, from the EOS Education team here at Fox Lake, and I have some more information to share with you that I hope will make using your Minio Pro 4 Interactive Flat Panel even more incredible. So, I want to talk to you today about the built-in Air Class tool. You can access this tool from a number of places using your Interactive Flat Panel. One of those places is using, from your home screen, in the bottom right, the All Apps Waffle. Additionally, you can access the Air Class tool from either side of your panel using the side toolbar. Now, this particular tool is going to be located at the bottom portion of that side toolbar with your other tools. If you don't already see it stored onto your side toolbar for quick access, tap the three dots more option and you're going to see those additional tools. Among them, you'll find Air Class. Now, you can quickly Add that to your side toolbar by pressing and then tapping on the green plus sign that appears. Currently, I have too many items over here, so I'm going to go ahead and delete one of them and I'm going to add Air Class. Now I have quick and easy access to that so that I can use it regularly in my classroom or in my environment. So now I'm going to open Air Class. And what Air Class provides for you is a quick and easy way to do those checks for understanding. It's a great way to engage with an audience and ask them questions and have them use their own devices in order to share their information to give you a bigger picture understanding of how your audience is receiving or understanding your content. So what happens when we open Air Class is it gives us this floating menu here. There are a couple of ways that participants can engage with your content. One way is to go to http colon forward slash forward slash class dot ifp share dot com, which is going to project right on the screen for them. Or you can tap in that upper right hand corner and you'll see that there's also a QR code option that students or participants can sign in using as well. So either of those options is available. And then when prompted, they'll enter the code that shows here on the screen. For right now, our code shows as 189227. That won't be active by the time you see this. Um, but each time you open a new session, it's going to give a new code um, to keep those sessions secure and to keep people who don't belong in those sessions out. You'll also notice from as people sign in, and I'm going to go ahead and sign in using the QR code option right now. But you'll notice when I sign in there, I'm going to go ahead and enter my name. And now what I see is right here where it says users have joined one. I now can see that I've been able to access this from my device. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter for right now. And I'm going to notice that a different toolbar pops up. This floating toolbar gives me the options within Air Class. The very first option is a voter option. And when I select that, I can either show on my panel or I can orally ask a question that either has one correct answer or perhaps that I want students or participants to give multiple answers to. But when I ask this question, I'm going to give it in a multiple choice format, such as you know, here's this question, is it A, B, C, or D? And it actually lets you have options all the way up to I. So you can either choose single choice method, which means that from A to I, uh, your participants will only choose one option, or you can use the multiple choice option, which means that your participants will be able to enter uh, a number of different answers for that. Once you've decided the question type you're going to ask, and you're ready for your participants to respond, you will tap begin. And now on my screen, I'm able to enter my answer. Now this is a multiple choice piece, so I'm going to do a few. I'm going to do A, H, and I, and then I'm going to tap on OK. Once I've done so, you're going to see on the panel that you can see Nick has answered the question. That's me. Now, once all of your students or participants have uh, responded and you see all of their names here, you can tap finish. You also can use a specific amount of time. It's keeping a running total of the amount of time you've had that question open. So perhaps what you want to provide for your audience, your students, your colleagues is uh, 30 seconds. 
in order to answer. So you can also follow along that way and make those adjustments there. Once we've gone ahead and finished that question, it's going to show us all of the results. And so if I had a bunch of different people, it would show how many of each person answered each of these answer types. So you'll see that as I mentioned, I answered A, H, and I. So it's showing me, since I'm the only respondent and I've chosen three options, that each one of those is a third of the total responses. So that's all that percentage at the top of each of those bars is showing, is what percentage of the total responses are included within that particular response. After you've done that, you have the opportunity to talk about some of the different reasons people may have uh, selected one of those options, or you can go right ahead and share with your audience what the correct answer or answers were. So for this, it says, please choose the right answers. And the correct answers actually were A, D, and I. And you'll notice that as the teacher enters the correct answers down here, you see the color of these bars above change. They were blue before because there was no correct answer yet. It was just showing us what responses we had obtained. Now that we've determined that some answers are correct and some are incorrect, it's going to show that on our bar. So those correct answers we chose, those bars have converted to green. And the incorrect answer that I had chosen now shows up as a red bar to ind indicate that it was incorrect. So again, that was our voter option. You also have in this floating toolbar the responder option. And really what this is, is it's going to be this loud drum that beats. And what it's trying to do is to find the very first one of your participants to buzz in uh, up from their device. And then that will tell you who that person was and allow you to then perhaps call on that person. So perhaps the question is a more open-ended or a longer term response question. You know, it's not as simple as, is it A or B? This might be a great way for you to be able to get that more individualized response uh, to a question that you have there. Alternately, you have the selector option. Now the selector option here is going to do a random selection from the number of participants that are in there. So right now it says up to one because I'm the only person that has signed in this session. Um, but you would be able to choose a number of different people from a, a group. So let's say I had 30 students in a classroom and I want to hear three different responses from students. But I want to make sure that it's random and fair and so that nobody feels like they were selected, you know, for other reasons. So I'm going to randomize it. I'm going to choose my three and then I'll tap on the start. And what it will do is it will cycle through those and it will tell me who those th three randomly selected students or participants were. You'll also notice on this toolbar the message button. Now, right now, this message button has a little blue circle with a line through it, which means that nobody can uh, send messages. If I tap that, you'll notice that the blue circle with the line through it goes away. And what that means is that any of the participants who have connected to this session would be able to type in and send a message. And that message will actually float across the top of the screen. So if you don't want students or uh, audience members to be able to engage with your content that way, simply tap on that blue message icon until you see the blue circle with the line through it. And then you'll be sure that no one will be able to send messages that are unwanted to your, to your panel screen. The other part here is we've got in that floating toolbar this manager button. And all that does is it pops back uh, pops back up that initial menu that we had that allowed participants to join our session. So let's say that I have a late joiner or a student arrives late to my classroom and I still want them to be able to participate with us. I can go ahead and tap that option and that will open this screen so that they'll be able to join us. So again, that's the manager option. And then in order to end my session with Air Class, all I have to do is tap that red X or exit. It's going to ask me if I'm sure that I want to do that, yes, and I will exit. So one of the things with AirClass is that it's not going to store this data in any way for you. It's not going to give you reports on that data. So it's really good for those checks for understandings or those opportunities to engage with your, your audience, um, but not for that long-term tracking of data. Um, but it's a really great tool that I think you'll have a great time enjoying uh, using with your students or with your colleagues. And I hope that you found this short session helpful 
and I look forward to another opportunity to share more information with you in the future. Have a great day.